Our launch point today is Shell Beach at the Katrina Memorial. The body of water you're looking at is the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet. It's closed now, but at one time it was a shortcut that ships used to get from New Orleans and Baton Rouge to the Gulf rather than going through the winding Mississippi River. <clears throat> it was built in 1969 and it was closed in 2017 after it devastated St. Bernard Parish because it wasn't maintained well. We're going up Bayou Iskloski, uh, which is a little city that's just a little bit south of Shell Beach. Shell Beach is 12 miles due east of St. Bernard State Park, and it's 4,000 feet south of Fort Proctor, which is where we're flying to now. At one time, Fort Proctor was on land, and land surrounded it totally. It was on the shore of Lake Bourne. Now it's kind of in the middle of Lake Bourne, almost totally covered by water from Lake Bourne. So Fort Proctor is a ruined 19th century fort in St. Bernard Parish, Louisiana. It's known also as Fort Beauregard, or Beauregard's Castle, after P.G.T. Beauregard, who supervised its construction. We'll talk about him later <clears throat> with the architect J.G. Totten, and we'll talk about him later. The fort is on the shore of Lake Bourne, just north of the mouth of the Bayou Iskloski. At the time it was built in the 1850s, there was also an adjacent railroad port called Proctorville. The fort was intended to be part of the fortifications protecting water routes towards New Orleans. In 1814, the British Army had attacked New Orleans after their Navy advanced up Lake Bourne and defeated a small flotilla of gunboats belonging to the New Orleans squadron of the U.S. Navy in the Battle of Lake Bourne. Due to delays caused by hurricane damage, and then delays due to the outbreak of the American Civil War, the fort was never garrisoned. By the end of the Civil War, improvements in artillery had made the fort design obsolete. All the time and effort and money that went into this huge fort and it was never used. They never stationed, never garrisoned. People never were in it ready to fight. It's amazing. In the 1940s and the 1950s, before it was engulfed by Lake Bourne, the ruins of the fort were a popular gathering place for teenagers seeking a spot where they would be unsupervised. Well, that's the only function it served, <laughs> was to, to give a, unsupervised teenagers a place to do their thing. The construction of the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet in the 1960s cut off all land access to the fort site. It can be seen in the distance from Shell Beach, Louisiana. In 1978, it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. It is now completely surrounded by water about one foot deep. Before Hurricane Katrina, there remained one small piece of dry land inside of the fort. The fort was unusual in its design for two innovations. The inclusions of comfortable living quarters, including bathrooms, and the extensive use of structural iron in its construction. I mean, this thing was really built stout. It, it would have been an incredible fort had it been used as a fort instead of a playground for unsupervised teenagers. <laughs> incredible. All right, so let's talk about the architect. The architect was Joseph Gilbert Cotton, T-O-T-T-E-N, born in 1788, died in 1864. He fought in the War of 1812. He served as Chief of Engineers. He was a regent for the Smithsonian Institute, and he was co-founder of the National Academy of Scientists. 
In 1836, he was elected a member of the American Philosophical Society. That's quite a pedigree. That's incredible. And he is the person that designed this fort. Joseph G. Trotton was born in New Hampshire, Connecticut. He was the 10th person to graduate from the United States Military Academy, being one of the three graduating members of the class of 1805. Totten entered the Corps of Engineers in February 1808 and helped build Castle Williams and Castle Clinton in New York Harbor. During the War of 1812, he was chief engineer of the Niagara Frontier and Lake Champlain armies under General Stephen Van Rensselaer. As a member of the first permanent board of engineers to which he was appointed in 1816, along with General Bernard, he laid down durable principles of coast defense construction in a report to Congress in 1821. Totten oversaw the construction of Fort Adams in Newport, Rhode Island. While at Fort Adams, Totten conducted experiments with various mortar compositions and published a paper of his findings, Brief Observation on Kalman Mortars, Hydraulic Mortars, and Concretes. In 1833, Totten purchased the Francis Malbolden House in 10th Street in Newport. At that time, it was the most opulent house in Newport. He lived there for the remainder of his time in Newport. Totten was appointed Chief Engineer of the United States Army in 1938 and served in that position till his death in 1864, the longest tenure of any Chief Engineer. Totten was involved with the construction of Fort Montgomery on Lake Champlain in upstate New York. During this period, Totten invented an iron reinforced embrasure for cannon known as the Totten shutters. The hinged swinging doors were installed on cannon openings in the fort between the mortar and brick facade. Balanced to swing freely, the iron shutters would be forced open by the gases expelled by the cannon and then rebound shut immediately afterwards, shielding the gunners from incoming fire. Quite an innovation. He, quite a quite a guy, a real uh, real inventor. So he designed it, and then P. G. T. Beauregard built it. He was the supervisor for the building. Beauregard is actually a very famous person, also from the Civil War. He was born in 1818, and he died in 1893. He was a military officer known as being the Confederate general who started the American Civil War at the Battle of Fort Sumter in April of 1861. Trained in military and civil engineering at the United States Military Academy, West Point, Beauregard served with distinction as an engineer officer in the Mexican-American War. Following a brief appointment as superintendent of the U.S. Military Academy in 1861, and after Louisiana seceded, he resigned from the United States Army and became the first Brigadier General in the Confederate States Army. He commanded the defenses of Charleston, South Carolina at the start of the Civil War at Fort Sumter in April of 1861. Three months later, he helped win the first Battle of Bull Run near Manassas, Virginia. He was born in St. Bernard Parish, Louisiana. Beauregard had several key commands, including control of the Battle of Shiloh, the Siege of Corinth, and then returned to Charleston to defend it in 1863 from repeated naval and land attacks by Union forces. In April of 1865, Beauregard and his commander, Johnston, convinced General Davis and the remaining cabinet members that the war needed to end. Johnson surrendered most of his remaining armies to, including Beauregard and his men, to Major General Sherman. After his military career, Beauregard returned to Louisiana, where he advocated black civil rights, including suffrage. 
served as a railroad executive, and became wealthy as a promoter of the Louisiana lottery. I mean, here's a guy that was prominent in the Civil War. He was a general, and yet he was promoting black civil rights and suffrage and became a railroad executive. It, the, the, the Civil War is actually misunderstood, in my opinion. But those are the two people. Beauregard built it, and Totten designed it. There's some pretty famous people to, to be in charge of it. The, the flight over the area went well. You see we now we're backing away from the, the fort, backing into uh, Shell Beach. Shell Beach has a lot of fishing camps in it uh, with a lot of boats. It, it amazes me how in this very isolated area, there are so much money, so many camps, so many boats to go fishing. These have got to be summer camps. These people, this can't be their primary residence. This must be probably duck hunting camps and, and fishing camps. It was, a, it was a very informative, very interesting expedition going out and seeing Shell Beach. I'm, I'm very glad that I did it. That's looking down the Esklowski uh, Bayou. Now at the bottom of that is the city or the village, I guess, of Esklowski. That was the adventure.